Good evening, I'm Chris. Uh, this is my kitchen, welcome. A uh, few things I want you to know about me. First is I did not get into selling Pampered Chef to become rich. No means. I got into it because I love cooking, I love cooking gadgets, I love having nice stuff, and I believe in Pampered Chef. So a few things I want to tell you about me. First is I am not gonna sell you something I don't believe in. If you ask my opinion and I like a product, I'll tell you I like it. If I don't like it, I'll say, no, not for me. If I don't know anything about it, I'm gonna ask some questions in some Pampered Chef groups I belong to and get back to you. Second is I love kitchen gadgets. And anyone who knows me can tell you for years, one of my go-to gadgets has been the Instant Pot. It's the craze that it's been popular for several years now. Uh, so I was so excited when I saw that Pampered Chef has its own brand of electronic pressure cooker called the Quick Cooker. So I thought, what is the difference between the two? Where are they similar? And ultimately, which is better? I am not gonna tell you to buy the Quick Cooker just because Pampered Chef sells it and I want you to buy stuff. But I'm gonna show you the features of both of them, the pros, the cons, and let you make up that mind, make up your mind for yourself. All right, so we've got two electronic pressure cookers. On the left, we have the Instant Pot, on the right, we have the Quick Cooker made by Pampered Chef. If you look at them both, for me, the first difference is the Pampered Chef one looks so much nicer. It is elegant. It looks, uh, it just looks more sophisticated. It looks higher end, where this looks like a kind of like a old robot from a 70s movie. Um, but we don't buy our kitchen gadgets because of the way they look. Another thing I like about the quick cooker is it's got handles built in where the Pampered Chef one or the Instant Pot has them on the side. And I've heard stories about people dropping them, the handles breaking. That's not going to happen here. If we take a look inside, you can see they both have six quart bowls. So they're both about the same size. They even make similar noises. I don't know if you hear those going in the background. Uh, so then we get down to controls. So controls on the in, uh, Instant Pot, you have the soup, meat, bean, chili. You know, I never use any of those. When I've used it, I use manual and I set the time. Now with a quick cooker, you have a whole host of ones. You've got sear, steam, slow cook. You can proof bread. I have not done that, but you can, it says. Chicken, poultry, beef, seafoods, uh, soup stock, white rice, brown rice, whole grains, beans, stew, chili, dessert. And each of these are set to a different level of pressure that's best for that product, as well as a different time. But you can adjust the time. Another thing you could do is you could hit custom and look at all these different pressure settings. So you can set it for different levels of pressure, uh, depending on what you want. I've had the Instant Pot for probably three years now. I've never once changed the, the pressure. I'm not even sure how. So those are a couple of differences. Um, for me, the, the biggest difference is safety. They both lock into place really good. They both have the little thing that pops up when it's full. But if you've ever used an Instant Pot, when you need to uh, lock in the steam to set pressurize it, you turn this knob this way, and when you're done, you turn this and the steam blows up, so your hand's right by it. With a quick cooker, you push this button, and you can see very clearly when it's up and when it's down. Also, your hand is nowhere near the steam release. I tell you, my wife didn't use the Instant Pot for the first two years we had it because she was terrified she would get burned. Uh, this is not an issue at all. So next we're going to do a test. We're going to see which is actually quicker. I'm going to put a cup of water in each and set it and we will see when it comes to pressure. So a lot of people are intimidated by electronic pressure cookers. They say the first thing you should do is a water test. What a water test is, is simply putting a cup of water in it, letting it come to pressure and releasing it. Uh, the reason you do that is to, to get used to it and also to make sure it works. So I'm going to put a cup of water in the quick cooker, and a cup of water in the Instant Pot. So make sure 
sure they're both closed. So I'm going to go custom time. We're just going to set it for three minutes. Now that's one thing I do like about the Instant Pot. When you set it for a time, it remembers it for the next time. This goes to the default every time. So as soon as we hear this beep, we'll hit start over here and we'll be ready to go. Dueling instant or dueling pressure cookers. So now we're going to wait for them to come to pressure. And we'll see uh, when the time comes up, that'll let us know that it's at pressure. Uh, the little bobbin will pop up, but you won't be able to see that from here. All right, so you can't see it, but the uh, knob on the, uh, the little bobbin on the quick pot just came up. It's been about three minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, so this will start displaying three minutes and start counting down any moment. This one is still the quick uh, instant pot is, see, there we go, we've got the three minutes. It's still allowing that. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to release. Just push this button up here. That you really don't want your hand anywhere near that. Uh, next, we're going to try hard boiled eggs. So now we're going to do the second test. We are going to hard boil eggs. Uh, you know, boiling eggs isn't necessarily hard, it doesn't necessarily take a long time, but I think in a pressure cooker it makes it a lot easier. And in my experience, they're easier to peel. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take the little trivet. We're going to put it in. Each pressure cooker comes with its own trivet. Uh, we've already got a cup of water in there, and that's something that is very important. Anytime you use an electronic pressure cooker, you want to make sure there is at least a cup of liquid in there. Otherwise, it won't work, it won't come to pressure, it will burn your food. Uh, it'll just be pandemonium. You, you don't want it, it's bad. So we're going to put the five eggs in. Um, and I'm putting five eggs in for a specific reason. You know, you think, well, let's do six. You've got a dozen there. I'm doing five as a reminder on how to hard boil eggs. You hard boil eggs by pressure cooking them for five minutes, letting the pressure release for five minutes, and then putting them in an ice bath for five minutes. Five, five, five. Easy to remember. So I did five eggs to help you remember. So once again, we're going to... lids on. And make sure these are sealed. We're going to go to custom. You can see it, it defaults to 30 again, so I'm going to put it down to 5. And on this one, we're going to go to manual. We're going to go up to five. It's still on three because that's what we did last time. As soon as this one beeps, I'll start this one. Okay, so both of them have come to pressure. Uh, now, I noticed this time the Instant Pot was about 30 seconds quicker. Uh, so, you know, one was quicker one time, one was quicker the other. Uh, now they're both going to start counting up. This one was already at one minute. When you use a pressure cooker, there's two things you do when you're done. There's what's called quick release, where you immediately let out all the steam, and there's called uh, slow release or natural release, which is what we're doing now, where the steam will... It, once it reaches pressure and the, the timer goes uh, to zero, once it's cooked, it on, both of these automatically cook, kick to warm and the pressure starts releasing naturally. It takes a uh, lot longer. Um, some recipes call for a natural release, some call for a quick release. Uh, some like hard boiled eggs, after five minutes you do a quick release. Um, I do a, a natural release with a lot of meats because it helps it keep its moisture. It still keeps warm. So once they hit five minutes, we'll start doing natural release, or we'll do the quick release and you'll be able to see the steam coming out and why that aspect of the quick cooker is so much better.
All right, so the Instant Pot just hit five minutes. We're going to go ahead and release the pressure. Like I said, the, the, the spray nozzle where the pressure comes out is the same switch, so I'm going to be very careful. And it's also, this one uh, doesn't seem to have gotten that great a pressure. Uh, it's a little bit older, so um, that pressure released very quickly so um, I've had problems with it but you know this is three and a half years old or this is a week old I've only used this one this is the fourth time I've used it uh, I've made I made a I baked a cake in it believe it or not I made ribs I made a shrimp boil and I'm gonna have videos coming on how to do those and we're at five minutes here so we're gonna do our quick release and see how much better that is where you're nowhere close to where the steam is coming out and then you just take the eggs and you put them in an ice bath for five minutes and start to finish, including the ice bath. You've got perfect hard boiled eggs in 18 minutes, uh, which you know, is about as long as they cook on the stove. It might be a little bit quicker because you can leave them in the ice bath as long as you want. You just put them in there and forget about them. Um, and honestly, I've forgotten to quick release before. It's not a problem. They don't overcook. So uh, for me, it's a lot easier and just a lot better. And I hate peeling eggs, but people tell me they're easier to peel. So which of these is better? And I'm going to be completely honest with you. I've loved my Instapop for years, and I think they both have their pros and cons. I think the quick cooker is more elegant. It feels sturdier. I love the feature of having the release here instead of having to put it, and it has more control over it. However, the Instant Pot is a lot cheaper. The Instant Pot is usually about $100. This is $250. You can even find the Instant Pot on sale. But I feel like this is a sturdier machine. It's a better machine. It's kind of like shopping at Walmart versus shopping at Target. You're going to spend a little bit more, but you're going to get a higher quality dish. So it's really what suits your needs. If you're in a budget mood, go with Instant Pot. It works fine. I've used mine for years. If you want something a little bit nicer, they'll probably last a little bit longer. Something that gives you a little bit more control, has a little bit more safety features. Go with the Quick Cooker. Now the equalizer there is if you host a party, you get 50% off items or even free products. So that 50% off, this gets down to $125, which is cheaper than some of the nicer Instant Pots. Now, another benefit of the Instant Pot is it is a name brand. You can go to Target and get it. You can go to Target and get supplies. With this, you have to order uh, the replacement parts if you need them. You know, maybe you need a new silicone ring. Uh, you have to order those through Pampered Chef. So if you're gonna order one, I would suggest going ahead and getting an extra ring. Uh, they suggest you have one for uh, sweet dishes versus savory dishes. Sometimes the odors get in that ring. I've switched the ring out in the Instant Pot several times. I haven't checked to see if the rings are compatible. So I'm, that I honestly don't know. Uh, so budget, higher end. You know, pick the pot that, that suits your need. Uh, but electronic pressure cookers are wonderful. I love them. The, the meat you cook in it gets moist. Uh, in the fall and the winter, they are great for soups. Uh, you know, I feel like the name Instant Pot and Quick Cooker is a little bit of a misnomer because you'll see recipes, oh, cook pot roast in 15 minutes. I don't know the exact time, but that doesn't include the time it takes to come to pressure and to release the pressure, so you always have to add that in. Now, one area where the Quick Cooker excels is in the accessories. I only have one, I have the ceramic dish and it comes with this great little pad that you can put in it and you drop it down. Uh, it's got a silicone top that stretches over it so you don't have to worry about moisture getting into it. And when I bake a cake, this is what I put in. I just put a cake mix in there. Now, I'll be honest, it took longer to cook than I thought. I couldn't find a recipe, so I just experimented. But it was the most moist cake I've had out of a box in a long time. Uh, so, and the other benefit of this is if you put this on top of the trivet, it's 
So you've got the, the trivet. And so you can put things underneath it, put this on top. So you can actually cook two things at once. Uh, later this week, I'm going to cook a pot roast. I'm going to have the pot roast underneath. I'm going to cook potatoes in here for mashed potatoes. It'll be a one pot pot roast and mashed potatoes meal. So look forward to, to that experiment, that video. Uh, so I think the, the accessories for the, uh, the quick cooker are hands down much better than the ones I've seen for the Instant Pot. Now the flip side of that is these work fine in the Instant Pot. So if you wanted to get the budget pressure cooker, but get the nice accessories, you can do that as well. So really, it's your choice. It's what you're looking for in an electronic pressure cooker. If you want something a little bit nicer, something with a better warranty, something that's going to last you longer, that feels a little bit sturdier, is a little bit safer, by all means, get the quick cooker. If you're on a budget, if you're just entering into it and you're not sure if an electronic pressure cooker is for you, go with Instant Pot. Like I said, I've used it for years. I love it. Um, but I'm excited about messing around playing with a quick cooker and, and using it more and more. So uh, that's my review. That's the pros and cons of both of them. Uh, so I hope you've learned a little bit something and thank you.